well, I'm a heel. This is a baby face. We both work for the same wrestling company. He gets injured more than anyone who's ever wrestled. And <laughs> you know, this very first night back in character called someone else off. I thought, what else am I supposed to do? Of course, I must respond to this in character. And I did. Well, he's an actor, he's a comedian, but on this channel, you may know him as AEW and ROH star Brian Nemeth. And he's scheduled to be at World Wrestling Council's Road to Glory event in Puerto Rico this Saturday, competing uh, for the WWC Puerto Rican National Championship. But sir, uh, from the brief that I was given, I was uh, told that the, you know the audience did not have many kind words for you initially when you went there. I don't even know if I can repeat some of the terms that uh, uh, they said about you. But how did you earn their trust? Well, it's funny that you mentioned that. I I was under the impression they were yelling very nice things to me, but <laughs> and they were very vocal. I mean, the minute I walked through the curtain, they I will not repeat what they were uh, chanting. But I after the match went to uh, some referees, some other wrestlers, the interviewers, and to Eddie Colon, Primo Clone, and I, I asked them what they were chanting at me because it sounded like they really liked me. <laughs> <laughs> they did not like me, and I cannot in good conscience repeat any of those phrases on this uh interview because my mother would be very, very upset with me they were very foul they had a very foul terrible things to say about me and i look forward to going back to wwc and proving them wrong i'm a great guy they'll see i am sure they will sir and on the card uh i mean you also have press masters you have primo cologne could you preview mm -hmm. the card a little bit for the audience well, it's um, it's a huge card. It's going to be maybe even bigger than the last time I was there for Euphoria. And the, some of these matches, I mean, at, at every show, they're they're having uh, titles defended. I mean, I'm going to get, for the Puerto Rican title, like you mentioned earlier. Chris Masters is a champion. He's over on the mainland. He's out in L.A. with me. And I was just asking him. I saw him at uh, Gold Gym Venice. I said, when are you defending that title? And he said at the next show and i said all right there we go there's never a wwe show without multiple titles on the line there's so many titles i can't keep track of them but they're all very well established and well defended and every one of those matches i saw at the last show was incredible i mean you couldn't look away without so much action happening and there's different styles there's the puerto rican style there's the american style blended in there's a hardcore i mean there's some blood i hope not mine and uh like we were talking about at the beginning of the interview, the crowd is going insane the whole time. They have those horns, they're screaming, they're yelling profanities. I mean, it's it's everything I've dreamed of. When I started wrestling, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little long-winded right now, but these shows get me really excited. When I first started, my trainer uh, was Rip Rogers at OVW, and I was with Jim Cornette, Danny Davis, and Rip Rogers, and Rip would talk every session about puerto rico because he loved wrestling there and i always thought you know maybe i'll get hired by a company maybe i'll travel around maybe i will be a wrestler but i don't think i'll probably ever go to puerto rico it just seems so far away for some reason even though it's part of you know usa right. Right. i thought i'll wrestle in japan or england before i ever wrestle in puerto rico and now that i, I was there the first time i just had all these flashbacks to his classes his training sessions where he would describe exactly what was going to happen what the crowd was like and i mean it's still true to this day that was 10 years ago it's still exactly the way he describes it and he was wrestling probably in the 80s so it's almost as if re pro wrestling in puerto rico is a universe that time forgot because they are frozen in my favorite era of pro wrestling and there's nothing like it and i, I just i'm excited to even talk about it so i'm glad we're doing this amazing uh glad to know that and you have been making waves even outside the world of wrestling with the Iron Claw. Uh, what was uh, that like to film and the uh, fantastic reception that it got everywhere? Oh, I had so much fun. You know, um, I love acting. I love wrestling. And there was, there was one day, maybe it was a lunch break, or I just took a break from, from shooting. And I texted my girlfriend and I said, this is what my life is about. Combining the things I love so much together. And I will give... Uh, massive credit to Zach Efron, Harris Dickinson, and Jeremy Allen White. Those guys in the ring 
were so dedicated, so passionate, so physical. They didn't half-ass anything. I mean, they were, the first day I showed up for stunts training, they were all standing there like this, watching Yvonne Eric's uh, six-man match. And I thought, this is incredible. I thought I was gonna be working with stunt guys. They are doing the wrestling. It was really, really, really great. It was a lucky, um, lucky moment of my life. I'm very happy. I was, I, I auditioned for it and you know, you, I send in so many auditions. I, I never think I'll hear back from any of them. So when I got that one, I was flying to an AEW show and my manager said, can we confirm you as Gino Hernandez? And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> Dude, I was so, I couldn't believe it. It was awesome. Um, I love the wig, you know, it, it was an honor to be part of that story, to be part of the Von Erich's legacy. And um, I can't say enough good things about it. It's, an, it's my favorite depiction of pro wrestling ever on film. And there's been some great ones. And if you haven't seen it, please, it's streaming right now. Go see it somewhere, somehow. Uh, I, I was uh, watching the bear. Uh, I mean, right before this, so to speak. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I mean, uh, do you mean to say that Jeremy Allen White and Zach Efron they took bumps? They took their own bumps and everything. Well, you know, there are of course cases where there, a stunt person will come in, but they did the wrestling. I literally saw Zach Efron in the same ring with me, jumping off the top rope, and I was just thinking. You know, this is, this is one of those things you never think you're going to see is barefoot Zac Efron leaping off the top rope in a pro wrestling ring. I mean, it was great. <laughs> and I got to give credit to Harris Dickinson because he threw one of the most beautiful drop kicks I've ever seen in pro wrestling. Wow. And they kept it in the movie. And I remember I, I, when it's streaming, you know, I saw it in the theaters. You, I think it's him, but I'm streaming. I went back and slowed it down. I'm like, that's him. That it's really him throwing the drop kick. And I was so proud because... Dropkick's one of my favorite moves ever. I love a dropkick. And it was great to be on hand to help these guys. And, you know, not that they needed that much help. They're natural athletes. And so, but, but I must give credit to Harris's dropkick. Beautiful. <laughs> Amazing, man. Uh, so you uh, were, uh, I mean, you have been a part of AEW for such a long time. But uh, we haven't seen you that often uh, in the ring uh, the uh, I, I mean, what is the status? Can we expect you back in the ring in some capacity soon? I will very uh, diplomatically tell you is that uh, that is a topic I just can't talk about at the moment. Okay, fantastic. But uh, I am, uh, you know, everything I've ever done with AEW, I've been very proud of, and I appreciate the time that uh, every single match I had there and all the friends I made, and it was a great experience, and TBD, I just, you know, uh, all right, all right, fair enough. So, uh, I, I mean, going back to that experience, what were some of the highlights of that run? Uh, in AEW? Yeah, yeah. I Some of my favorite moments in AEW are the ones you wouldn't maybe think of. So, of course, I had a lot of fun, you know, wrestling in tag matches and singles matches on the, you know, Rampage and Dynamite. I had a real fun Rampage match with Jungle Boy or Jack Perry. But, but the moments that I will never forget, um, and I choose these in, you know, my entire career, whether it's NXT, Indies, anywhere else. In AEW, one of the biggest moments ever for me was uh, at one point and during Dynamite and the Jacksonville lockdown days, I was in outside of the ring with Sting and Sting and I interfered in the match. It was Darby and JD Drake, I believe. And Sting came at me with his baseball bat and I was like, oh no, no, no. And he pushed me out of around the whole entire ring, up the back ramp, out into the parking lot. And I just thought, this is kind of amazing because this Sting is a legend. Uh, the last interaction a Nemeth had with Sting was at Survivor Series when he helped my brother win Survivor Series. Right. It was on my mind. You know? And also, I love cartoons and the Three Stooges, and this just seemed like a very Looney Tunes thing to be happening. Like, I'm just, I'm falling backwards the whole way. I, like, you know, I just thought it was incredible. So for those three reasons, that is a major highlight for me. Anytime in AEW that Tony would ask me to go out to the live audience, whether during commercial break, during live TV, or, or you know, in between TV tapings, he would, he, I, I will credit him that he always trust, he trusted me to get heat from the crowd. And there was a, an emergency. Hangman Adam Page was knocked out on live TV and Dynamite during the main event. And we had trouble, you know, the show can't end that way. So I was just standing around Gorilla. And that was another example of Tony just saying, Ryan, go out there, get some heat and, uh, you know, do something with uh, the, the Blackpool Combat Club. And I said, got it. My music hit and I just watched the ring talking. 
knowing that I'm good at this, I'm prepared, I can get some heat from Cincinnati. And they don't know I'm coming out there, you know, Moxley and uh, Cesaro or Claudio, they don't know I'm coming out there and they see me coming out there and they're like, well, we know each other from NXT. We, we came up together in developmental and there's a, a rapport and a trust and a charisma between us. So I cut the promo, they make some jokes, blah, blah, blah. And then they give me the big swing and dirty deeds. And I thought like, <laughs> Hearing the, the crowd cheer was so great because 10 minutes earlier, they were like scared for their lives that Hangman Adam Page might be seriously injured. So all of those moments are very magical for me and I appreciate them and I will never forget them. So I have to ask you this. I mean, Sting's last match happened recently. So as someone who mentioned that as one of the highlights of uh, his AEW run, what did you think of how the last match went? I think... The last match seemed, you know, it's, I can't really interject on things I don't know the secret details about, but I imagine that that was exactly what he wanted to happen in, in many ways, and I think it's incredible. I think that man has done so many physically insane things for someone of his stature and age, and I am massively impressed. <laughs> hey, I, dude, let me tell you, tell you one more thing. Please. It was maybe my second or third match ever in AEW. It was uh, preparing to wrestle against Pac on Dynamite, I believe. And I was pacing around behind the entrance ramp, a little bit nervous because I was still a new person. I don't officially work here yet. I'm just in someone else's playground and workplace, so to speak. And Sting was watching me pace around, and he said, that reminds me a lot of myself when I was younger. And I wow. said, how do you mean? And he says, nervous bleach blonde hair, tan skin, hoping everything goes perfectly. And I said, yeah, that's me right now. He goes, you'll be fine. And he walked off and I was like, yeah, dude, Sting. I just, you know, those little moments that he probably forgets ever happened, but I will never forget that, you know? Amazing, man. So uh, we cannot end this interview without asking you one uh, question that, I mean, everyone wanted me to ask you. Uh, for one day, you were the talk of the wrestling world when you tweeted about the softest man alive and yes. Ramsey and, and everything that happened uh, after that. Could you shed some light? Because everything is so vague about that situation. About my tweet? About your tweet and what happened after. Because a lot of reports came out about a confrontation backstage and stuff like that. But I don't think... Well I'll tell you that there's some things I can talk about and some things that I can't talk about, but I can very happily tell you about my tweet. Um, the top good guy on the TV show was missing for eight months due to what I was told was a triceps injury, right? And on his very first night back, he, he in character, called his someone else soft. And so I thought, well, I'm a heel. This is a baby face. We both work for the same wrestling company. He gets injured more than anyone who's ever wrestled. And his, <laughs> and his very first night back in character called someone else soft. I thought, what else am I supposed to do? Of course, I must respond to this in character. And I did. And so anything beyond that, I guess I'm probably not uh, safely My able point. to talk about at this time during this interview. But I think that's a very reasonable thing for a talking bad guy heel to say in response to the heroic baby face who seemed to be a little bit hypocritical. Is that fair? That is fair. Uh, absolutely. And I look forward to the day when you can talk about it so we can uh, repeat so this. So I. I can't wait. Hey, um, can I plug my uh, comedy show with my brother also? Is that okay? Please, please. Absolutely. Hopefully this will go up. I mean, it must go up before then. Next Wednesday, so this is after the big Puerto Rico show for WWC, after I win the Puerto Rican title from the precious one, Gilbert, uh, my brother and I are going to Philadelphia Wednesday night. We're going to kick off WrestleMania week, huge, at the Nemeth Brothers Prevents, Prevent, Pre Presents Hunkamania. It's Wednesday night at Helium Comedy Club in Philadelphia. I think there's only a few tickets left, but this is for the few people who would really, really, really want to go and buy those tickets. We're, we're about at a sellout, but I just want it packed. And if you haven't heard about it and you're in Philadelphia and you want to party WrestleMania week, Wednesday night at Helium, Hunkamania, baby. Uh, but that'll, of course, be after I win the Puerto Rican title at WWC this Saturday. So let's have a prediction then. Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes. Who do you got? 
<laughs> oh, this is so hard because I, you know, I, I started with uh, Roman Reigns. We came up together in FCW and NXT, but Cody Rose was very instrumental in getting me uh, set up at AEW, so this is tricky. I think probably Cody's got this one. <laughs> Amazing. So let's... <laughs> So let's end with me asking you, uh, what is your Mount Rushmore of comedy? Let's end on that. Mount Rushmore of comedy. I can tell you someone that I think about every single day is Chris Farley. Right. How can you not so, have that? I'm not amazing at Mount Rushmore's and I'm not amazing when people say, what's your five top movies or uh, songs <laughs> or, or wrestling matches? That's very hard for me. But I can tell you that every single day, I bask in my admiration of Chris Farley, his uh, youthful innocence, no matter how, what age he was, his athleticism, his <laughs> charisma, and it's just he's just oozing with you love him, you know, and um, that, that I aspire to that guy, you know, I think he's amazing. Do you think if, uh, you know, Van down by the river, he takes a bump almost as well as a wrestler, right? <laughs> uh, wait, wait, wait what, what exactly was your question? Uh, no, no. I, I mean, doesn't he take bumps exactly like a wrestler? I mean, he falls. Oh, take bumps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's good. He does. He does. Oh, you know, uh, a, a very amazing book I read this past year by Jenna Friedman, amazing writer and comedian. Uh, Jenna Friedman is up there for me. I think she is so funny. She's such a brilliant stand-up comedian and writer, and I always want to... And she's been on a hunk of media show. She's done one of our shows before, which I appreciate. Fantastic, man. I, and on a side note, I don't think this, this will go up, but uh, I was uh, listening to you on Chris Van Bleet uh, before this interview. I mean, just to prepare for this part. But uh, I, I always thought that your natural voice sounds a lot like Norm McDonald. I don't know if you've No, know, I, I've heard that uh, many times in my life. Norm McDonald would be up there for it. Yeah. You know, we got to hang out with him one night. It must have been in Phoenix, I think. Justin Roberts, my brother and myself, we went to see him. And after the show, we got to hang out in the green room with him for about an hour. And that was pretty cool, man. That was really great. Just to see his set and then see him talking about it afterwards. I have been told that I sometimes sound like him throughout my entire life. And I'm fine with that. That's okay. That's not bad. <laughs> Amazing, man. I, I can't wait to look, uh, I, I, I mean, see you win the big one in Puerto Rico this weekend. And best Thank of luck you. for uh, WrestleMania weekend. As well. Oh, I have uh, Martin Short on my shirt too. That's another comedy. Uh, isn't there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm interrupting you talk. All right, dude. No, so we have four names then. Is that four? That's four. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. And maybe Steve okay. Martin if, uh, I mean. <laughs> yeah, he can, yeah, he can be waving in the back, yeah. <laughs> Thank He's you fine. so much. He's fine on top of it, yeah.